Hey guys, Karen here. Um, working on the frame again. This may take me a month to get done though, um, because I gotta get some ink from my printer and stuff, and that may not just be possible until next month. Where are my glasses? Right there. So, but right now I'm gonna at least work on the outside of it, and um, I kept changing my mind what I want to do, what I want to do. Um, I thought about crackling, I thought about like maybe glazing, and I didn't want to do any of that stuff. Um, my paneling, like I said on the other one, it's, it's um, dark in the bedroom, and I like to go with a white theme. Um, eventually, I probably will paint that paneling white too, though, and I was thinking about that, and I bought this um, the year I bought the house, as a matter of fact. I bought this the year I moved in here because um, I like the color so well. I would love to do my walls and that, but this is just a little bit too pricey to have enough to go over paneling. Um, but I thought I'm going to do my frame in this color because it's a it's a light color. Um, it'll, it'll show up nice on the dark wood paneling. And um, I can always paint it white if I want to down the road. That wouldn't be no big deal. This part right here, though, in the frame, I just got it covered with gesso. I'm not for sure if I'm going to actually paint that or leave it white. If I'm going to paint it white, because um, it definitely needs another coat, or if I'll go over it with the blue. I haven't decided that yet. But I have some um, old, like, doily pieces. A friend found something at a yard sale. I probably had these about two years now. But, as you can tell, it's ragged. You know, they're they're not in the best of shape, which that's okay with me um, because to me that's just texture and that's exactly what I'm going to use this for is texture on this frame. I'm going to cut up pieces and stuff and just place them around the frame and then I will paint over top of everything with this. And I, have, I do have a few of these and um, I'm going to put these on there. I think what I'm going to do though before I put the the Waverly pool paint um this is chalk paint it's called pool I'm gonna um I'll go over it with gesso first and then with the paint that way um one thing gesso is good for is it will um if you do your undercoating with gesso it'll give you the true color whatever color choice that you make and I'm hoping that the gesso will cover up this dark color so and then it will everything will be the same shade <laughs> is my thought we'll see if it doesn't work out that way it doesn't work out it's no big deal but I do want to go with the texture so and let's see I may have to move you guys I've got my stuff all laid out all over the place I'm in between making books and doing this I'm going to be able to see if I pull it down on this. You say, hold on a minute, guys. Let me get you moved so I can get situated. It's easier for me to, yeah, that'll work better. Work on. Can you see everything? Yeah. Can you see good enough? You can see what I'm doing. Um... I got some, I'm just using this for glue, the, glue down the doilies and stuff. I don't want to use, I can't use this in my um, mini albums because it wants to buckle everything So with paper and stuff. So I'm going to use it for this just so it gets used. It's, I've had that for a while and I'd rather use it than have it go to waste. What I want to try, I want this to go in the corner here. So, let's see. And I just lost some. Well, there's hangover. I'll just cut it off because I'm not sure. And 
that will work. I'm gluing directly onto the thing and once I get it up there I'll glue some on the wood but I'm only doing that for the simple fact that when I paint I don't want it to act like a um, crackle effect for any paint that I put down in the future so I don't want to get it on the wood until I know exactly where my placement of my mat's going to be. And I don't like hot glue. I don't trust hot glue is a problem. Um, I like it when I'm doing my flowers and stuff because it's just quick to hold and everything, but I know from certain things that I've made, hot glue has released, and I've heard other crafters say that, you know, hot glue will release, especially in, you know, with the weather. Cold can make hot glue released in a heartbeat. I just like I like wet glue I'm, I'm a fan of wet glue um, black cat 13 she turned me on the wet glue so whenever I can use wet glue I use it that I'll probably have to cut off because my board has to go there And I'm not too worried if everything sticks completely. Because once you gesso over it, that's going to help seal it down too. I'm like, ah, there goes my mat. There goes my doilies. So what's everybody been doing? My garden? Oh my goodness. We had such bad storms here last several days. Last night's the first night that we didn't get hit with bad storms. Um, let me see, that was Sunday. Was it Friday? I think it was Friday night we had, um, maybe it was Saturday, I can't remember. But we had um, rotations in the clouds and we had a funnel. Someone had spotted a funnel cloud and then we went into a tornado warning and trees were bowed over and I went out one day and <laughs> my poor old case knife beans that's what I planted I love case knife beans and it's a type of green bean but they're um they're a bigger bean they're meaty um and one of them I had it I had it um you know, the sticks coming up the ground so it can grow up and hang down and everything. Boy, it ripped them right out of the ground. My plant was still intact. And my neighbor helped me pick it up and shove it back in the ground. But that it, I mean, it's been standing there all summer like that. And, um, yeah, Plum ripped it up out of the ground. And, um... 
a couple of my tomato plants are getting so heavy with tomatoes but they're not ripening yet that it actually broke the it broke the limbs I've got four tomatoes tomatoes like this sitting in my window because this is where the main sun comes through during the day there's four of them that were on that one branch and it just snapped it and I've got them um, tied up and stuff but apparently not good enough and I had I had some really nice tomato cages from Tractor Supply really they were the heavy duty ones paid extra money for them um, actually got them the year um, that I found out I was sick because we had started a garden and then I couldn't handle it because of all the surgeries and stuff chemo but um, my cages every one of my tomato cages are gone what Joe did with them I don't know who he sold them to because I know he didn't give them away just made me madder than fire So it they wouldn't be so bad if they, if they were in the cages. I'm gonna try and put. I really like that. You like that? I like that. Um, some money away to get more cages next year. Then I had another friend. Um, him and his wife. They do a um. What's it called? Their garden is built up. They live in town. And their garden is actually between their house and the house that's next door. And um, they put railroad ties on top of each other. And um, then filled it up with dirt and manure and stuff. And I'm going to try some of their techniques because they... The way they've got some of their stuff run. Oh man, it would be very nice to use that cage wiring. It's for like animals. Keep cattle in. They're using cattle stuff. Cattle wire. For the stuff that grow up. So, and it's not that expensive. It'd be really nice for your um, cucumbers and squash and stuff like that. to tack down just a little bit and there you go I'm not going to worry too much about this when I hit this with gesso that's going to smush it right in on the, onto there so I'm not going to worry about it having a lot of glue in the bottom I think that'll work. What do you guys think? Yep. That's what we're doing, guys. <clears throat> and I have some tomatoes that are ripening on the vine now. I'm actually going to go see if I can pick them today. And, um... I've got two cucumbers. Squash are flowering. And I noticed last night when I was looking, there is just a little baby. I mean, about that big. Just a little baby squash. Right there. So. I should have squash. 
and then I had some friends they went on vacation so I ran over to their house for a couple days and um, made sure their dogs were okay and get, put their food out for them and stuff and um, she told me hit the garden if there's anything in there you want go ahead and get it and I got the squash the squash was huge it was way ready to be picked I got the squash and come home with it and um, Saturday I blanched it I still got four big ones to go though but I blanched it all up, cut it up, blanched it, and um, froze it. So. I'll have some good. I like it in like cabbage or hamburger soup. I like big chunks of it. So that's how I, that's how I cut it. And that's how I froze it. And then if you just want, you know. For a meal, a side dish. That's what I did, and I like I like it. Um, I like it boiled with just dab of butter on it. I can make a meal out of that. So, I know she fries hers like green tomatoes, and I I do like them like that. They're okay, but I'd rather have them just baked or. Boiled with a little bit of butter on them. But I feel the same way about green tomatoes too. I'm not a big green tomato person. Everybody around here, but then again, I also live in the South. So, you know, everybody around here are big, big green tomato freaks. They want them nice and fried and that just, it's not my thing. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Now I'm sort of wishing that I'd done this all the way around. Oh well. If I want to do that or not. I really like that. Oof. Stop doing that to me. Okay. I'm going to cut this up. Do I want to cut that up? At least half of it. I don't think it matters. Oh, out of, out of glue, guys. Out of glue. So, my garden is coming along great, and I'm happy about that. I have stuff put away for winter. And then I got invited over to 4th of July to some friends. Man, the fireworks, the best fireworks. I have seen in years now, I'm telling you, it was just, it was like going to town somewhere and watching them, watching the city put one on. They were, they were that nice. They really were. And the cookout was really nice. People played volleyball. We had rain and stuff, but <laughs> bless them. Every time they try and get out to start a volleyball game, they just get going and here come the rain. They play for just a little bit and then come in. I think they tried volleyball three or four times that night. But it was it was still a good time with good people. So I appreciated it. 
I really appreciated it because I'm used to being busy on this weekend. I mean, we were always gone out camping, on the boat, out in the river with friends, something, you know. We were always just doing something. And we lost, um, my dad passed on 4th of July in 89. So it's always sort of been, you know, a little bit because of my dad, you know. But always stayed busy. So, um, when I was here 4th of July and stuff, I woke up, I, well, I woke up thinking about my dad and then, um, was just reading and stuff and I was just uh, getting into a very melancholy mood and then my friends called and said, Karen, you want to come over for 4th? And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> I just didn't want to be alone. And that's really the first thing that I've had since, um. Me and Joe's part it, where I didn't want to, where I actually felt lonely. And I think it was more because, you know, my brothers and everything are in Florida. None of my family is up here. It's just me. My daughter's in Wisconsin. My grandbabies are in Wisconsin. My mom and my brothers are all in Florida. So... Do you think I'm talking to you, Smokey? Is that why you're thumping your tail, buddy? Oh, huh? Mama talking to you? You're listening? You're a good boy. Yes, you are. You're just a good old fella. I love you. Yeah. Smokey laying here beside me. The other ones are outside. Okay, what do I do with this one now? Do I just finish cutting it up and piecing? Actually, I think that's enough stuff, though, to be honest. It will get used somewhere else, and I don't have a baby wipe anywhere nearby. Anywhere nearby. I didn't ever think about that. My desk isn't used to me crafting anymore. And I've not done it in months. Okay. I'm just gonna go straight into gesso here, guys. So, my brush is dry. I hope this is dry enough, it won't move it. <laughs> It's going to cover it good. If I have to, I'll give it two coats. It probably helped. I need one of them dauber brushes. I never have gotten one of them. That would really, I think, work good on this. I'm just trying to get the extra off. I don't want it globbed. Can you guys see? Is my big fat head in the way?
excess off. Get down there. Just get down there. Stick. There you go. I'll try and maneuver these to where I want them. That way they're not all stuck together. I do want some definition. What is it with you two? Oh, you're still stuck together, aren't you? Okay. Well, we'll let you stay that way. Remember, you're using this to hold it down, too. It'll dry onto the thing with the gesso. But then you want to get the globs. You don't want it... You don't want to take away of the texture of the... the thread and stuff. But you do want to make sure it'll hold down. Can't be no brown, you've got to go white. I want my blue to be blue. Might have to do two doses. No problem. See that white glue, that's holding, that's holding this. This was a thick doily, and it's holding that with no problem already. I mean, they're, they're stuck, so. Sure what that is, but it's got to go. To pour some more into my lid. Okay guys, you get the idea where I'm going with this. Look, I got a big glob right there. So, um, I'm going to keep heading in that direction. And I may have to go over it twice. If I do, I'll let you guys know. I'll come back when it's time to paint it so we can see how it 
turns out. Um, definitely gonna have to go over it twice where these thicker door doilies are these beige doilies. So there you go. Um, everybody take care, and I will talk to you later. Bye.